Good afternoon. I'm sorry. I'm having no slides, but I'll try to explain why. Yesterday, having received the topic of the discussion, I understood that mm, well, having looked through the internet, uh, learning uh, this issue on, on scientific level, uh, but met and other networks, I understood that as a surgeon, as a doctor, I would have a difficulty in, well, com compiling something out of this uh, visual information. That's why I'll try to convey my viewpoint verbally. It will be just talk, a speech, in the process of our talk. So I hope that we'll have some discussion. If there are any questions, I'll be uh, happy to answer. Um, during the online session. So let's begin. I feel that I'm a little bit um, awed at this session. Um, I was invited here for a reason, but I was afraid to come because if we take um, an average doctor of my age, about 40 years of age, and who has quite an extensive experience in this area, we all, in fact, uh, communicate with patients in a way so that uh, we feel right. So we we'll, we listen to our hearts. So we had no training in communication. And uh, there are no courses about communication with the patient. This is a novelty in our country. And these courses are different. There are professional courses, and uh, some are not really professional ones. And everything depends on the um, doctor's interest about his um, understanding that there is an issue. So a doctor himself tries to um, become, uh, b become skillful in this area. So how often does it happen? I think there is no statistics on that. But I believe that about 10, 15 percent of doctors uh, decide to um, to uh, improve their skills in communication. I think it's a general um, data on Russia, and the same is with CIS countries. And um, the majority of doctors who communicate with the patients, they do not just understand um, this, but they do not see it as an issue. So a patient comes. And the uh, communication is usually very formal. All the medical history is learned and additional methods are indicated and prescribed, but nobody looks into the eyes of the patient. They don't think of the emotional uh, side of the patient. They don't talk to, to them. They don't know what the empathy is, and they don't know how to use it in their practice. So I believe that uh, what I'm talking about is one of the points that makes patients after talking to a doctor to uh, go to pseudoscience because doctors do not pay enough attention to communication. So doctors do not think about empathy. They don't try to think about the problems, they are too formal. We know that consultations are very limited. So the timing is short, it's just 12 minutes. In some clinics, it's 15 minutes. Do you have enough time to explain the patient that uh, taking account that the patient is an oncological one and uh, that uh, the patients are usually very emotional about this kind of diagnosis and half of the information is uh, usually left uh, without attention and we can say that the doctors are not the root of the problem but one of the points, the parts of the issue that uh, make them go to pseudoscience. And this is one of the points that I would like to stress out today. There are other issues as well and other components of the problem that uh, make uh, people go into pseudoscience is it's one information field. So information field that we live in and it, the field in our country is very heterogenic. I
I would say it's closer to medieval times in our country. If we look at uh, information sources uh, abroad in Euro to European websites, American websites, every website, each association has a good uh, page for a patient. We know that it's an ABC protocol that is followed from A to Z. There are very clear explanations about the types of cancer, types of localizations, ways to for a diagnosis, explain what's going to happen, what types of treatment there are. And one, if a person reads through the guideline just once, the patient gets ready to visit any type of specialist and uh, form questions that um, are needed to be asked. And the doctor who has communication skills will be able to communicate well. And I believe that the effect out of such communications is much more effective than the one we see today um, in our country. I think it's quite obvious. Yesterday, out of interest, I decided to open YouTube and searched for uh, stomach cancer treatment. How many hits from real good uh, websites were there? What do you think? In first 20 hits, there, there were no uh, reputable sources. In in one video, there was a, a lecture about prof professor telling about uh, stomach resection. But in all other cases, it's just pseudoscience. And patients look this uh, this videos. If you if you look at the scope of such videos, you'll be uh, surprised. And uh, there are more than. 40,000 subscribers to such channels and up to millions of channels. They are very popular sources. And I've actually listened to some of them. They are absolutely um, psycho science delusion. But we cannot prove it to our patients because on emotional level, it's very clear what is pseudoscience. It means that all true mechanism of uh, human physiology are explained in very unclear but very emotionally clear terms. So our patients leaving a doctor not being not satisfied with the information that they receive when they come to the internet they open such sources and they decide why why not try because everything is so clear here and the doctor couldn't explain anything to me he just told me that you will do this and that so i believe this uh, second problem the second component of the problem in our country i would like to say that these people who do pseudoscience are very active. They are consolidated. And now I've realized that with the example when I started to issue my own videos about traditional uh, stomach cancer treatment, and these publications were posted online, you, we can look at this actually, you, you can imagine how consolidated, how I was negatively attacked with comments. Doctor, you don't know what you do. This is the mildest comment. You are poisoning and you're trying to poison everyone. So up to such comments as doctor, you're a killer. You've killed so many people and uh, all your life you've killed people. and on any source where I try to post my videos, real battles happen between the people who realize what pseudoscience is and the same surnames, the same nicknames. It means that, that they filter 
so they monitor information situation online and they actively participate when they see any type of scientific approach when there is some kind of standard normal treatment and this treatment is promoted online they start to attack it is a consolidated society it's a community who which thinks about its future and when online resource and became popular, they realized that it could be uh, the beginning of a big problem for them. So uh, that's, that's um, the explanation for their reaction. And so this was the third component. What, what first one is talk to, then information field, and the third component is consolidated pseudo-scientific uh, community. They realized that uh, they can lose their profits and uh, they fight it. And the fourth component, it's the most essential one, is our patient, the mentality of our patients. The mentality and the level of the society's development influences the uh, choice of treatment that the patient uh, resorts to. So I believe our society is, is on the way of development. Now we are still on the stage where the situation when we believe uh, start to recognize ourselves as an independent society, uh, not a not in a paternalistic way, uh, when a patient comes to a doctor and doctor says that I will treat you like that without giving any reasons, but we try to recognize ourselves as people who try to get evidences and try to make decisions. I like the presentation, the previous presentation. Thank you very much for the information. Actually, quite often we make decisions emotionally and patients is not um, and so are the same in this way. And so emotional decisions are very important. They can be correct or incorrect. And many people, when they come to doctors, they try to uh, think, reason cognitively, uh, based on logical schemes, but very often our heart, our soul, our so-called liquid psychological system affects us, and if we don't like the doctor in a certain way, uh, let it be a great surgeon, the patient may leave and come to a different doctor and uh, see this be in the situation when pseudoscience become the only way of treatment so i feel uh, myself a bit excluded from this uh, today's um, audience because uh, i don't know how to communicate with patients i do it uh, by intuition and when the patient comes to me and he asks me what do you think about alternative uh, treatment I, in my opinion, first of all, we shouldn't uh, become angry because many doctors become angry and uh, they say, go away, I don't want to talk to you about this, I won't treat you if you resort to alternative treatment. It's a not, uh, it's not right approach. Uh, I think it's important to listen. So if the patient says that um, there is this, uh, uh, this doctor who treats with herbs and I feel that uh, this will be successful, I, I believe that it's important not to refuse the options that psychologically as a placebo effort could calm the patient down to give him uh, give him some assurance that everything will be all right but it shouldn't be an alternative treatment um, in, to the traditional one so it's important to understand that if a patient came to you it means that he doesn't think about pseudoscience as the only resort so your task is to persuade the uh, patient that standard uh, medicine is effective, that it can help, and that in any case, no matter the stage of cancer, uh, there are options to prolong the patient's life. 
the question is whether we, uh, let's say, it's a, if it's a late stage, with if when it's a metastatic pancreatic cancer, and we can do anything about uh, that. Uh, if we have to persuade the patient in this case, uh, I think that no, because the existence and survival uh, against the background of chemotherapy um, makes the quality of life worse. So if um, uh, you realize that the treatment will not increase the quality of life four or five percent, we need to uh, we need to tell the patient that I wouldn't use chemotherapy in your case. So I'm um, a patient says that I'm an onco patient, and in case of metastasis, I wouldn't use chemotherapy, and I wouldn't use pseudo science as a way of treatment. But it's my decision, and. It could be an emotional decision. It might change with time, but right now I decide to behave in this way. So when we listen to the patient, the doctor shouldn't break the patient's decisions. The patient has to think about his uh, situation on his or her own. So our task is to inform the patient about all possible approaches, all possible complications. And if the patient asks for some non-aggressive types of pseudoscientific treatment, I think uh, you should agree the patient will trust you and uh, will be ensured about positive effect and everything will be all right. So I would like to uh, finish with this. Thank you very much.